good afternoon all of you today i am going to introduce you the new topic that is stone masonry so first of all it is very important to know the definition about the stone masonry a masonry means construction of the buildings using a building blocks now which are the building blocks like your stones bricks concrete blocks etc these are nothing but the building blocks with the help of these building blocks you have to construct the building you have to construct your project that is nothing but the masonry so masonry is used for the construction of the foundations plinth walls and columns this masonry is used in your foundation of the your building this masonry is used in the boundary wall of the any of the uh, bungalow or we can say residential project or the commercial project then it is used in the plinth walls in the walls also plinth walls also the masonry is used and the various columns we have to use the masonry in the masonry the mortar is the binding material for the building blocks okay so you know about the mortar and wall it is already studied in the module number 1 2 3 uh, about the mortar so mortar is the binding material for the building blocks now in the next slide we have to see some example about the stone masonry structures if you observe the first picture which is nothing but the taj mahal the third picture is a qutub minar and fifth picture is the gateway of india these all structure are made up from the stone masonry if you observe the last picture that is picture number 6 the dressing of stone is carried out in this particular picture with the help of this dressing of the stone such type of structure are made some stone chips are remaining after the dressing to the stones and that are used in a walls as like your picture number 2 in the next slide we have to see the types of stone masonry so typically the types of stone masonry or the masonry is divided sorry stone masonry is divided into two part very first part is the r and second part is the a so r stands for rebel masonry and a stands for ashlar masonry so what you have to remember first of all the stone masonry is divided into two parts very first rebel masonry second is ashlar masonry again your rebel masonry is divided into four part and the ashlar masonry is divided into five parts so rebel masonry is divided into how many parts four parts so first part is nothing but coors rebel masonry second part is अनकोर सरबल मैसोनरी थर्ड पार्ट इज ड्राई रबल ड्राई रबल मैसोनरी एंड फोर्थ पार्ट ऑफ द रबल मैसोनरी इज पॉलीगोनल शेप रबल मैसोनरी नाउ वी टॉक अबाउट द राइट हैंड साइड इट इज नथिंग बट द एशल आर मैसोनरी सो टिपिकली दिज एशल आर मैसोनरी इज डिवाइडेड इन टू फिफ फाइव पार्ट फर्स्ट पार्ट इज एशल आर फाइन second part is also ashlar rough tooled then ashlar camfered then ashlar facing and ashlar back in a course so these are the five types of the ashlar masonry again we will repeat first point is ashlar fine then rough tooled then camfered then facing and back in a course and in the rubble masonry it is divided into four part rubble uncoursed dry rubble and polygonal shape now each and every type we have to see in the detail now first of all we have to see a very first topic that is nothing but the coarse rubble masonry in this type of masonry stone having a straight bed and sides are used if you observe in the right hand side figure you will get the clearly idea in this type of masonry stone having a straight bed see here this is nothing but a straight bed this is nothing but a straight bed and sides are used this sides are also straight okay the stones are usually squared and brought to hammer dress or straight cut finish this type of stones are basically it is a square if you observe this stone is it is what square if you observe it is what square if you observe this it is what square so and how this square shape is obtained with the help of what hammer dress or the straight cut finish the work is carried out in course of varying depth this work is carried out in course in 
course of varying depth in such type of masonry the size of stone used in the masonry are in between 50 mm to 200 mm always remember in this such type of masonry the size of stone used is a 50 mm to 200 mm then a stone of equal height should be used in every course if you observe this entire figure from top to bottom okay the stone having a equal size a uh, such type of such types of stone are used okay so uh, the equal size of stone of used and joints are about 50 mm in a thickness in this coarse rubble masonry commonly used in the building construction where the walls height is low like a residential building public building piers abutment of the small bridges care should be taken that joints must break in a different course while you are going to use this coarse rubble masonry or cr masonry shortly it is called as cr masonry in this course when you are going to or when you are going to add up this technique you have to take a care about the joints must break in a different course okay the joints not be in a same that is all about coarse rubble masonry second part is nothing but the type of stone masonry and second part is coarse rubble masonry in this coarse rubble masonry the uncoarse square rubble masonry the different size of stones having a straight edge and sides are arranged on the face in a several irregular patterns see here in that previous masonry there are regular patterns but in this particular type that is coarse rubble masonry the different size of stone having a straight edge and sides are arranged on the face in the several irregular patterns now third part is nothing but dry rubble masonry in this type of masonry the mortar is not used in the joints this type of construction is the cheapest and require more skill in the construction this may be used for non load bearing wall such as compound wall such type of dry rubble masonry is used in the compound wall or Uh, boundary wall of the building or any of the structure in this type of dr masonry that is dry rubble masonry smaller pieces of stone are used at the top these walls are generally broader at the bottom and thinner at the top the strength and durability of the masonry does not depend upon the quality of the material used but on the workmanship the entire quality of the construction is depend then this is the last type of the stone masonry uh, rubble masonry that is polygonal rubber masonry when i am going to explain just you have to see the figure for your better understanding in this type of rubble masonry in this type of rubber masonry the stones are hammer dressed the stones used for the face work are dressed in an irregular polys- polygonal shape this is nothing but a face work okay and does the face joints are seen running is an irregular fashion in all directions that's why it is called as polygonal polygonal rubber masonry next type is nothing but the sub type of the ashlar masonry so very first type is nothing but ashlar fine masonry in this type of masonry each in this type of masonry the each stone is cut to uniform size is uh, each stone is cut the uniform size and shape with all size of rectangular so that the stone gives a perfectly horizontal and vertical joints to adjacent joint stone so this type of ashlar masonry is very costly if you observe the figure there is no any cavity or there is no any voids are present due to what due to the uniform size and uniform shape of the stone such type of ashlar masonry all the vertical joints in two adjacent core should be st- start the maximum thickness of the all joint should be 3 mm the next type of ashlar masonry is ashlar rough tool the name itself implies this definition in this type of masonry the beds and sides are finely chisel dress with the help of chisel you know the chisel it is the building material we already covered this point in a model number 1 so this chisel dress but the face is made rough by means of tool 
A strip about 25 mm wide and made by a means of chisel is provided around the perimeter of the rough dress face of the each tool. In this type of ashlar of rough tool, a 25 mm wide strip is provided. Then the ashlar rough camfered. In this type of masonry, the beds and sides are finely chisel dressed. It is what chisel dressed, but the face is made up rough by means of tool. A strip about 25 mm wide and made by means of chisel is provided around the perimeter of the rough dress face of each stone is camfered at an angle of 45 degree. So what is the difference between this ashlar rough and ashlar camfered? In the ashlar rough there is no any camfered at an angle of 45 degree is used. But in the ashlar rough camfered the angle of 45 degree is used that is the basic difference and that is the we can say difference in the quality or difference in the aspect of that particular uh, tool uh, particular uh, stone masonry so next is nothing but ashlar back in course so this is the combination of rubble masonry and ashlar masonry so this is the combination of what r and a okay for your better, better understanding you can write this is what combination of r and a now what is meant by R? R is nothing but rubble masonry and A is nothing but the ashlar masonry. So in this type of masonry, the face work is provided with a rough tool or hammer dress stone and backing of wall may be made by the rubble masonry. This backing of wall, this backing of wall is made up by what? The rubble masonry and face is provided with a rough tool. If you observe this, this is the face, this is the back. So it is what rough tool. Next is point to be considered during the monitoring of stone masonry. Suppose when you are become a civil engineer and you have to uh, construct any type of uh, boundary wall or we can say compound wall at the same time you are going to use the stone masonry. So what is your duty or what point you have to remember during the construction of the stone masonry that are listed below. First is while you are selecting a stone, your stone must be hard and durable and it is free from defect like your cavities, veins etc. The dressing of the stone should be as per the requirement. It is depending upon the requirement for how much quality, how much size of the stone, uh, then how it is properly dressed or not. or uh, the different type of requirements are there so with the help of that you have to choose your material third point is nothing but stones should be properly weighted before they are used okay the amount the stone should be properly weighted because what if you avoid such thing then what happen the sucking of the water from the mortar is may possible then the stone should be laid on the natural bed only then the facing and backing which is already studied in the last video lecture should be laid neatly and level and checked within a wooden template. The heart of the masonry should be filled with the stone chips and mortars. Two thick mortar joint must be provided. Now heart of the masonry is nothing but what? What is mean by heart of the masonry? If you observe, suppose this is the one brick. Suppose once a minute. Suppose this is the one brick and this is the second brick. So the distance between these two that you have to fill with the mortar like this. Okay. That you have to fill with the mortar. That is the heart of the masonry should be filled and with the stone chips and mortars. Okay. With the help of stone chips and mortar you have to fill the that particular cavity. Then seven point is vertically verticality of the wall should be frequently checked with the plumb bob. You know the use of the plumb bob the with the help of the plumb up you have to check the verticality of the wall mortars with the correct proportion of the sand and cement should be used while you are placing the mortar in between that cavities that material should be properly propagate propagate because the uh, amount of the cement amount of the sand amount of aggregates that sorry amount of sand and cement that you should be know then the continuous vertical joint should be avoided you know that in any type of stone masonry you have to avoid these things then the through stone through stone should be used within a 1.5 meter distance that is known to you 
then the height of machinery should be raised uniformly like 1 meter 2 meter 3 it is not like this 2 meter then 8 meter okay so it is uniformly under the beam trusses seals etc large flat stones should be used to sustain the loads before con continuing the work the machinery built up on the previous day should be well clean and free from the loose particles nextly the curing should be done properly for the 2 to 3 weeks okay so curing should be done properly for the 2 to 3 weeks you know the importance of the curing in the concrete as the same way that there is importance of the curing in the stone machinery so that you have to do properly in this way in this lecture today's video lecture we covered the point that is a masonry then the stone masonry so you know about the masonry masonry is nothing but the construction of the building using building blocks like stone bricks concrete etc then it is used in the construction of the foundation plinth walls and columns and as a binding material the building blocks are used in the stone masonry then there are two types of masonry that is rubble masonry and ashlar masonry so while talking about these two first of all the rubble masonry is divided into four parts very first coarse second uncoarse third dry rubble fourth is polygonal shape now in terms of ashlar masonry there are again five types first is ashlar fine second is ashlar rough tool third is ashlar camphor fourth is ashlar facing and lastly ashlar back in a coarse and then point to be remember during the monitoring of stone masonry there are 15 points that you have to remember properly and with the help of that point you have to construct your compound wall or stone masonry i hope everybody understand this lecture clearly thank you